Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wild Card Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ben Pulowski. I'm part of uh, the Learning Center here at Geotab. Uh, our topic for today, we're looking at engine fault codes. Uh, specifically, we are going to be looking at some of the capabilities of the Geotab platform in uh, terms of being able to pull those engine fault codes. But then uh, more importantly than that, uh, getting more so into what do these engine fault codes mean and how do you read them and what actions can you take to address this data that, uh, that you're getting in the system. Uh, I'm joined today by Kurt Ford, who is our Heavy Truck Experience Manager. Kurt, thank you so much for joining us today on Wildcard Wednesday. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, everybody, for uh, taking the time to be here today. My name is Kurt Ford, and I am the Heavy Truck Experience Manager here at GeoTab. And before we really dive in, I'm going to kind of give you a little background about myself. Uh, I started my career as a technician. I was working for a small trucking company fixing those old Freightliner cab overs. And the more I worked on diesels, the more I really got into transportation. And um, when I was 21, I obtained my Class A, and I drove tractors for several companies like FedEx, Motor Cargo, United van lines. I even ran doubles and triples, hazmats all over the U.S., so I, I totally feel your guys' pain. But I always remained passionate about mechanics, and I gave up driving commercially when I went to work for American Medical Response back in 2003, and there I was a diesel technician, and during that time, I got to rise up to uh, be a corporate trainer. I traveled all over the country training technicians on diesel in engines and new technology as it arrived. And after 10 years of wrenching, backbreaking work and training, I became a shop manager overseeing the fleet operations for Las Vegas. As a manager, I went back to school to obtain a degree in business, and I moved on to manage fleets for companies like PepsiCo, Brinks, SolarCity, and CenturyLink. My role here at Geotab is I'm responsible for working with our heavy fleet managers and organizations to ensure that all of our Geotab solution is being optimized. I work both internally and externally to better support our heavy truck fleets by making recommendations involving safety, productivity, optimization, compliance, and driver policies. During my time here, I've discovered that many fleet managers are unaware of the hidden benefit of diagnostics, codes, and measurements that Geotab offers. So our agenda in this discussion was going to be an introduction to what the OBD and the codes are and a brief view into where Geotab is a solution for trying to monitor these codes and diagnostics. So my objective today and my overall goal is to clarify the types of codes, to interpret the different codes, and identify common codes and their severity. But before we talk about OBD and codes, we're going to look briefly at how Geotab's engine faults and measurements come into play. We're going to stay pretty basic today. Um, there's a lot to go over, and, and engine codes can encompass a lot. But we'll go more in depth during another session to really explore the versatility of using Geotab to identify mechanical issues in order to save you time and money. So Geotab offers these engine measurements. They log all the engine data received by the device and allows you to view available measurements and ranges. They also allow you to determine if a measurement is available for that specific unit. When we talk about engine measurements, we mean the cranking bolt voltage, the engine coolant temperature, engine speed, the gear position, the EGR system, the EVAP system, and a lot of other systems. Geotab gives you the actual data for where the specific measurement falls during the time frame searched. This information can be cross-referenced when a fault code in the system is shown and utilized to verify whether the system is out of range or not. It saves on the testing and allows your technician to get a snapshot of where the vehicle's measurements for the system have been or where they currently are. And as you can see on the screen, there are various different engine faults appearing for multiple different types of cars. Knowing what to look for and how to interpret these codes will be extremely beneficial to understanding if this vehicle is needed to come out of service or if it can stay out till a scheduled time. And we're going to dive into what these codes mean, how to dissect the letters and numbers in each code, and what component it is affecting. By knowing this basic information, it will provide you with the tools to make informed decisions about the routine repair and maintenance of your fleet. And this information is generally available to you faster than it would be read at a dealership. So the first ones we're gonna look at are the, the notorious field trim codes. And these are the, the P0171 and the P0174 codes. And is one of the most popular codes a vehicle has. Code P0171, which is known as System 2 Lean Bank 1, and P0174, which means System 2 Lean Bank 2. 
It means that the computer has noticed by reading the oxygen sensors or O2s that there is too much air going into one bank or two. Engine control computers or ECMs need to have a specific ratio of air to fuel in order to work properly. And if there is too much of one or the other, then it will set a code. Well, looking at the measurements in your geotab system, it'll tell you what the value of fuel content is, whether water is detected in the fuel. These are both things that can set this P0171 and 174 code. Geotab's engine faults will let you know if the light is on or going to come on because of water and fuel or too much air going into one of the cylinder banks. If this is a code that comes up or the measurements in Geotab show a low fuel content or water in the banks, I would usually check the following things. I would always look at your gas level. This will cause a P0171 to appear. I would check your mass airflow to make sure it's clean. You also wanna check for vacuum leaks and you wanna check your O2s for proper readings. And I would even look at fuel pressure to see if it's low. So what about misfires? Well, the code P0300 this is a code that is generated when your engine has a misfire that is not related to one specific cylinder. Misfire codes like P0302, P0303, et cetera, et cetera, are some of the most common OBD codes. They basically mean that there is a misfire on that respective cylinder in the firing order. For example, P0306 means misfire cylinder six. P0302 means misfire cylinder two, and so on. Driving with a misfire can cause unburnt fuel to be put into the exhaust because one or more of these are not burning like they should, which then is sent to the catalytic converter. It is not made to clean up exhaust with unburnt fuel and it can soon become very, very it, can be, it can become bad, it, it can take it down. Looking at measurements in Geotab will tell you if the cranking voltage is running within a normal range and if Geotab has a capability of monitoring misfires. The faults will pull the exact code to be able to determine which cylinder has a miss or if it's a random cylinder miss. If this code happens to come up or the measurements show low cranking bolt voltage or a misfire code, these are the items that I would check. Obviously the problematic cylinder itself. I would check the plugs, the wires, injectors, and a lot of times I even try to swap one part from one part to another to see if it stays on that respective cylinder or if the problem follows the possible faulty part. Now we're gonna get into EVAP codes. These codes, when they appear, the computer detects your EVAP system is not working correctly. Well, what is an EVAP? Well, all it really is is a way for the fumes that are, that are generated from your fuel sloshing around and expanding on those hot days to be stored in the, until they can be sucked back into the engine and burn. So in order to do this, automobile manufacturers put a charcoal canister. And this is just a part that stores all these fumes. And then they install it with hoses between this and the fuel tank. And when there are too many fumes to fit into the gas tank, they travel through these hoses to the charcoal canister and they are kept there until the computer determines that they can be used in the engine and it opens a valve, otherwise known as a purge valve, to let them to be sucked back into the engine. If one of these hoses or the valve that lets these fumes go into the engine malfunctions, then there would possibly be gas fumes going into the air and it would have a very abundant smell. The first thing to try with one of these codes is reinstalling your fuel cap. And it's that simple as this can cause this code and is an easy fix and we see it all the time. If you suspect the cap might be bad, then you might want to just replace it. It's a couple bucks. You can also check for any loose or bad hoses under your hood because they can cause this type of code as well. And if you look at your measurements, it will let you know if the EVAP system is being monitored and the faults will tell you the specific code to help narrow down whether there's a small or large leak, the fuel cap is loose, or if there is a potential issue with another part of the EVAP system. So oxygen sensor codes, and there are a large number of codes relating to O2 faults. There are also a lot of faults that are often incorrectly thought to be caused by a bad O2. The codes that may give you a run for your money are the ones P0171 talked about earlier, and I'm gonna throw in P0175. These codes tell you that despite the computer's attempt to correct your fuel trim, and the fuel trim is the amount of time the injectors stay on delivering more or less fuel as needed, it cannot obtain the correct air to fuel ratio. And these are known as your notorious rich and lean codes. Well, the geotab measurements will let you know if we monitor the O2s and the faults will let you know which bank or sensor is the issue or if it's a rich or lean problem. But if you have an O2 code, what I would check for is I always check for vacuum leaks, a restricted fuel filter, or maybe a pinched fuel line, 
and a lot of inaccurate input from other sensors relating uh, engine misfires. And for the rich codes, I would look after the fuel injectors, the wiring, fuel pressure regulator, and the EVAP system. And the other codes that need to be addressed are those related to sensors located after the catalytic converter or the CAT. Though these may appear identical to the O2s, they perform an entirely different task, and these are known as your uh, monitors. The only job of these is to monitor the efficiency of the CAT. The reading from these should be much more stable and not fluctuating like the front O2s. The computer compares the readings and the monitors to determine if the catalytic converters are doing their job, and that's cleaning the exhaust. You never want to replace a monitor for a rich or lean concern, as they really have no bearing on these codes. As the converter begins to fail, you will see these monitor voltage readings follow the O2 sensor readings. This is just some data that you can pull and compare in your GeoTab, as long as your vehicle is supported in sharing this data. The information is available, however, to all Pro and Pro Plus members, and a great way to stay proactive in engine repair and maintenance. So hopefully, if you're not a Pro or Pro Plus, hopefully this presentation will really help you decide to become one. What is OBD? Well, OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics. Vehicles have been equipped with OBD since the 80s. They were originally installed to regulate emissions and boost performance. Another benefit to utilizing OBD was due to OEM's mass adoption of electronic fuel injections. It's kind of standardized everything. So what are OBD2 codes? Well, OBD2 was introduced in the mid 1990s and our fault codes that for, for like example, your spark plugs. And spark plugs emit a spark of electricity across a small gap to create ignition for the combustion needed to start and operate your car. By putting the engine's pistons in, in motion, you can power up, stay powered up, and produce that smooth burn of compressed air to fuel mixture that makes your car go sweet vroom. If one of those spark plugs begins to fail, the ECM will read this. Not only does the ECM read it, but with your Go device, this data is available to better diagnose and determine corrective actions sooner. So a bit about OBD2, and all vehicles manufactured after 96 are equipped with an OBD2 port. OBD2 ports can be one of like three types, and they're pictured here on the screen, but are either a nine pin, a six pin, or a 16 pin. Most heavy trucks are equipped with a nine pin. Usually the six pin is for heavy trucks between the years of 96 and 01, and the 16 pin is the standard for most automobiles out there today. The OBD2 port generally can be found under the dashboard, and a little fun fact is that it, it usually must be within three feet of the driver. So check engine lights. This fault appears to the driver as an illuminated picture on your instrument cluster in the dashboard. This is the check engine light. The check engine may look different depending on the type of, of, of vehicle you have, but they all function the same way, and that's to inform you that there's an issue. The check engine light will not illuminate until after a series of faults occur, and the ECM checks and double checks prior to setting these diagnostic codes. So we do have other warning lights. The check engine light is not the only warning symbol on the instrument cluster. There is an oil warning lamp, and this will identify issues with your oil level. And a, the fun fact is that GeoTab actually offers a report in the marketplace that will help identify oil levels and even send an email when your oil level is low. So we have some other warning lights, and that's the temperature warning lamp. And this identifies issues with abnormal operating temperatures within the cooling system. The engine temperature warning light on the dashboard generally appears as a thermometer with wavy lines next to it or a box with wavy lines inside of it. If this light activates while you are driving, it is telling you that your engine is hot, possibly due to a low coolant condition. GeoTab has the ability to write rules to monitor the temperature and notify you of a potential issue or situation with this temperature of the engine. And on the screen, we can kind of see an example of just a, a code that was written that would identify a vehicle that would operate on warm operating conditions and it'll alert you before it gets to a critical level. OBD2, these diagnostic codes are broken down into a letter and numbers. And as you can see here, the letters are B for B for body, C for chassis, P for powertrain, and U for user. The most popular codes that we see are P, and those are your powertrain codes. So when we look at the chart here, the orange column will identify the trouble code subsystem. And we see here it's a P, so we know it's a powertrain code. The yellow column will tell you if it is an OEM or if it's a generic code. And I'll talk about those on the next slide, I promise. 
and the greenish column will tell you what subsystem has the issue, and the purple columns will be the area specific to the concern. So if you go back into our P0302 for our engine misfire, you can see here that the orange lets us know that it is a, it's a powertrain code. The O lets us know it is a standard, not a specific manufacturer code. And then we can kind of go through, we see the three can affect our fuel system, and the O2 will point us directly to where the problem occurred. And since P codes, are typically the only codes that will illuminate the check engine light, we're going to focus on those more so than the body, chassis, etc. A generic code is defined by OBD2 and is the same for all manufacturers. It's like a standardized problem that everybody you know, has the same code for. The OEM, or the manufacturer-specific code, this was created for when the manufacturer felt that a code was not available in the generic list, and then they set the definition for what that fault is. So now let's get into some common codes. And most co common codes are generally generic and they start with the P0. There are two types of DTCs. And the first type is more important because they can cause quick and severe damage to your, to your vehicle if they go unchecked. They are emissions related items like EVAP codes and misfire, misfires that illuminate that malfunction indicator lamp after one driving cycle. They also create a trouble code freeze frame. And what this means is that the data that was in the system related to the code has been stored in a snapshot that you can access later. The second type, they're not quite as important as the first type, but they should not go unchecked. They are generally emissions related codes that aren't causing like a lot of pollution. They set what we call a pending code. And this pending code is, is recognized after one driving cycle has failed, but it will clear itself up if it sees one successful driving cycle. And they only turn on the check engine light if it fails two consecutive driving cycles. And at that time, it stores your, your freeze frame dead data and it illuminates that check engine light. So we're going to get into a lot of codes and I try to group them up nicely. So P0001 through P0099. And although these are the most common codes, they are not as common as some of the other ones that we'll, we will be seeing. Codes between P0001 and P0099 are usually fuel and air metering and auxiliary emission control codes. And I try to put some examples here on the screen so you can kind of see what types of codes are affecting what types of systems. So we're going to get into P0100 and P0199. Codes that fall between P0100 and P0199 are also fuel and air metering codes. These will be things like your mass airflow, your throttle body, they're critical components to the op proper operation of your vehicle. If either one of these go out, they will cause your engine to run poorly and cause catastrophic engine damage if they are left unrepaired. Plus they're associated with a bunch of other codes that may not really be relevant to the problem. And what I mean there is you might have one code that affects three other systems. So the three other systems might not be bad. It might be the one code. So kind of identifying and knowing what it is affecting, you kind of get a general idea of what else it could affect. So now we'll get into P0200 and P0299. And codes that fall between P0200 and P0299 are fuel and air metering injector circuit codes. And these are codes for issues involving the fuel injector. And usually these are electronic based, so not really the mechanical function of the part, but the electronic part, which is why they're always gonna be kind of associated with a circuit or a range. It's, it's all electronic based. And here we're gonna go into P0300 and 399 codes. You know, we've talked about these a lot. These codes are ignition system and misfire codes. If there was a bad spark plug or a faulty coil, you would usually see a code set between P0300 and P0399. And there's, I, I listed some other items that you would see within this range as well. So now we're gonna get into P0400 and P0499. And these are those famous EVAP codes. So if you pull a code between P0400 and P0499, you have an EVAP system issue. And common problems with the EVAP system include faults with the purge valve. That's that part that, that vents the fuel va vapors back to the in engine, leaks in the vent and vacuum hoses, loose, ill-fitting, or those missing gas caps. The most common fault code is the P0440, which indicates a large leak, and that is often your gas cap. So P0500 and P0899, and codes that fall between these are codes involving vehicle speed controls and like your idle air control system. 
your idle control system, such as like your idle air control valve, your vehicle speed, your computer output, a faulty computer or transmission codes. There's a wide range of codes. And I try to put as many as you can, as I could fit on on here to kind of give you a, a general idea of the sub the subcategories and, and what they affect here within this range. And that's what I have today for our engine codes. And I would like to just conclude with a just a small little personal story that actually happened to me and how I utilize my own GeoTab device in relation to this. And I was coming to work last week on Thursday and my check engine light came on, my battery light came on, truck started running really bad and I was stuck at a red light. So I was sitting there trying to determine what I can do and I uh, realized I forgot my GeoTab device is plugged in. And so light turned green, I pulled into an empty lot and I fired up my laptop. And uh, right there on the side of the road, within three to four minutes, I was able to diagnose my truck, realize that I had a voltage problem in my alternator. I was able to determine what part I needed to get. And I was determined able if I was able to drive it safely back home or if it had a catastrophic issue. And that one scenario right there saved me over 160 bucks between fees of having my code read, uh, possibly truck towed. It's just one simple example, the versatility and the available data you have even on the side of the road. With that, I hope you guys got a lot of knowledge here because keeping your vehicle in good working condition is the best way to avoid those big expensive repairs down the road. And utilizing your, your GeoTab, you can get a jump on those costly repairs and you can decrease your expenses by like monitoring your engine for discrepancies and faults. Keep in mind, GeoTab will pull a code faster than usually your ECM, and, and you can pull it without having to take your vehicle to a dealership. Thank you again for uh, coming in, and if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them for you. Thanks so much, Kurt. That's uh, really, really great stuff. So uh, I have a question for you, Kurt. I mean, obviously, you know, there's years of experience <laughs> going going into to all this information you shared with us here today. Uh, are there any particular resources that you use that that you would recommend to people wanting to learn more about this? Um, they have a lot of really good books for engine codes, and and you can usually get them at most uh, parts stores. And they are they are a wealth of of knowledge, and they're they're rel relatively in inexpensive, maybe, maybe about twenty bucks, so somewhere around there. Great. So, in your own experience, is there um, maybe? a particular engine code or a situation that comes up a lot that it's much, much easier to, to fix or address than people realize? Any of those jump out at you? The one that jumps out the most and, and the one that, that I see the most is, is causing everyone issues is, is for that gas cap. I mean, it, it's the most common thing I run in, in into. And usually the first time someone says, hey, my I have a check engine light on, the first question I ask is, did you get gas? You know, because I, the, it happens all the time. And, and that's why I wanted to highlight the, the P0171, because that, that is a, a really, really common problem. Sure. At the other end of the spectrum, I mean, a lot of what we've been going over here today is here's how you can understand this. Here's how you can address this. Are there are there any f engine fault codes that fall more into like the, you know, this this should this should be handled by a trained professional sort of thing? Yeah, it, usually the circuit codes for your injection system, those can, can kind of run you down. Anything electronic, a circuit B range, or, those usually indicate an issue with, with the with the, the either the wiring harness or the, the electronic component of that part. And usually from, from there, you have to use meters and read ohms and voltages. And that's when you deal with those, it, it's real simple to get a lot of costs throwing parts at things, trying to fix fix it. And then when you get those circuit codes, it's really good to have a trained technician look at those. Sure, sure. And I mean, you know, changing your gas cap is one thing, but, you know, it's always good to to make sure that you're partnering, you know, with, with a professional, with a trained mechanic to help address these things. Something else to, to point out is, uh, of course, the, the diagnostics and the faults that we're able to pull from vehicles is largely dependent on the vehicle and the protocol in which it operates. Kurt, could you could you speak to that for a moment, just sort of understanding what determines the data that we receive from a vehicle? So each OBD port, um, it, it has a CAN bus system and it's essentially like a giant desktop computer and, and it reads all the sensors and all the like electronic components in that vehicle at one one time and it it all runs through just like a computer run through a bunch of harnesses and runs through the CAN bus and so automobile manufacturers will allow a certain amount of data to be read by third parties and so 
depending on what kind of vehicle you have, we could have a wider range of data that could be available. And it, it all runs off of that same CAM bus system through that little DTC port under your dashboard. Yeah. It, so, so it really just depends on the manufacturer, the, the make and model of the vehicle. Correct. And then there's also, I mean, typically uh, even between, you know, uh, standard light duty vehicles versus uh, heavy trucks. I mean, we're going to get different uh, different measurements from one than than from another. Yeah, correct. And because diesels, they they run a little bit different than gas cars do. They don't really they don't run off a of spark. They run off of glow plugs. And then there's you know there's a whole wider range of, of things on those that'll run through that that can bus than there will be a, a small car. So yeah, that. All that, all that data will will vary from from make and model. Great. Well, Kurt, thank you so much for presenting here today. Uh, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us on Wildcard Wednesday. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we will see you next time on Wildcard Wednesday. Hope uh, hope you all have a great week. Bye, everyone.